Good afternoon. It is Tuesday, September 8th, 2020 at two o'clock p.m. My name is Joan Jennings. I'm the chair of the Public Art Committee and I'd like to call the meeting to order. Marissa, could you call the roll, please? Ms. Gregory? Here. Mr. Meals? Here. Ms. Robinson? Don't hear Ms. Robinson. Ms. Jennings? Here. Mr. Stackhouse? Here. Ms. Oberlander? Don't hear Ms. Oberlander. Oh, Lucianne, Ms. Robinson, are you here? I, I can see her. Okay. Okay, so we have a quorum. Um, I just wanted to inform everyone that uh, uh, with the resignation of Theo Ianu, there is a vacancy on the committee. Um, as Theo's term would expire on the 31st of October, it was decided to leave the position vacant and appoint a member for a full three-year term starting November 1st. And Mr. Stackhouse, you can vote with us now. Oh, really? Uh, you are <laughs> alternate number one. Alternate number one, okay. Okay, uh, and that was confirmed by the city clerk. Okay, um, Mark, do we have any guests? We have one public in attendance. Okay. Um, I'd like a motion to approve the minutes from the August 11th meeting. I move that they be approved. I'll okay. second. Okay. Um, I would like to um, amend the minutes. Um, on page six, uh, it reads that the fee could not ex exceed $1,000 for the city's insurance policy. I would like to change the wording on that to the fee itself could not exceed $1,000 in order for the artists to be considered minor subcontractors that would be covered under the city's liability insurance. Does anybody have any questions about the amendment? Could you say that again? I was Certainly. Yeah, please. Uh, the fee itself could not exceed $1,000 in order for the artists to be considered minor subcontractors that would be covered under the city's liability insurance. Okay, we never, yes, we never established whether that was including the supplies or not. No, that was the fee. That is the total fee including the supplies. No, okay. it was the fee Just only. The fee only. Okay. Okay. And I'm that was the that was the wording I had gotten from um, City Manager Lacoris, and I believe that's what was mentioned at the meeting. Okay. I move that we accept the uh, minutes as amended. Do I hear a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Okay. Minutes are accepted as amended. Okay, um, we have some current project updates. Uh, first, I am thrilled to tell everybody that as of this morning, we learned that the uh, art boxes are indeed here. Uh, a delivery was attempted and um, for some reason, uh, they were not accepted by the uh, coordinator down at Public Works. Uh, Diane put the, um, the vendor in touch with the um, uh, uh, Ray, who's the coordinator at Public Works, and they're going to try the uh, delivery again. So we should definitely have them in the next couple of days. Okay. Um, and we have all of our ducks in a row. All of the artists uh, were paid their honoraria. Uh, the bids for printing the vinyl are all in and in the procurement office. So, um, uh, and uh, Jeff Davis from uh, Porta Boards is going to mail email me the um, the final specs for the vinyl printing, just so uh, you know everything is done correctly. Okay, I'm going to go a little out of order here, um, if you don't mind. 
Okay, we have uh, some project updates. We'll get through this quickly. Um, okay. Uh, these are some uh, images from uh, Elizabeth Indianos about the mural. Uh, as you can see, um, the images from the old original mural on the right and the current images she's painting are on the left. Uh, <laughs> everything is uh, much more detailed and uh, she's using a, a much brighter palette. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is the Seminole Princess and Wood Duck. That's a dramatic difference. Mm -hmm. And uh, as you remember, um, at the last meeting, we approved uh, the purchase for uh, the city of Tarpon Springs of some um, uh, scaffolding, which she obviously needs to complete her work on the mural. And I think this picture gives you a pretty good idea of the so uh, scope and size of the mural. Wow. Okay, this is the uh, Cecilia Luisa sculpture that was installed maybe about a week ago in front of the Icaria apartment complex. And this was to satisfy the agreement that the developer had um, with the city and the public art committee to um, install a, um, you know, a, a sculpture that was uh, worth the equivalent of $100,000 or more. And uh, the PAC vetted uh, uh, Miss Louise's work uh, last year. She actually came to the uh, PAC. Uh, Christopher Stell, uh, his work is progressing. Okay. And um, I, I'm going to skip to this. Um, we got a, a request from Jacob Carr, who is the vice mayor. Uh, he just sent something out this morning, but I had already prepared this. And what he is proposing is the purchase of seven to 10 statues that can be used in different parts of uh, Tarpon Springs. Um, these would not be purchased by the art fund because they're not special or limited edition pieces. Uh, he would like the pack to assist in um, positioning the statues so they wouldn't conflict with any of our projects. But these were the some of the statues he proposed, and I believe that uh, there were some others that were in a package you should have received today. But I simply just didn't have the time to incorporate them in the presentation. Okay, and um, the city of Tarpon Springs also asked the PAC to assist with uh, a gateway sign uh, survey, and this was the text that appeared on the uh, City of Tarpon Springs uh, website. Um, okay, and these were the questions, I'm, sure, I'm sorry it's so small, but these were the uh, questions asked on the survey, uh, name, surname, email address, and a company name if appropriate, and some suggestions as to elements ranked as important, somewhat important or not important, um, the, the, uh, what the sign should be made of, uh, any colors, what this, what the, uh, uh, text should read on the sign, whether it should be illuminated, should it include landscaping and lighting. And there were some samples, um, of three options and people were asked to select one of the options. Okay. I just wanted to say I, I uh, did a copy of that survey on next door because I've noticed that a lot of people do sign in there as well. So uh, the email that w went out about the survey said, you know, please share on social media. So I just wanted to point out that I just shared it on next door earlier today. Oh, there you are, Makila. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I have technical problems. <laughs> oh, okay. So we have a full house today. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I'm sorry I skipped uh, around through the um, the agenda, but um, uh, does anybody have any questions about um, the ongoing projects, Louisa, Crystal, or Indianos? Oh no, Michaela. I had a I had a, a point of uh, order, if it's possible, uh, with regard to the art boxes. Uh, I love them. 
but I, I wanted to actually chime in last time and, and vote for them. And we had three whole days to, to vote for 136 submissions. That was the week when I uh, was starting school. And so I was a little bit late because I also had a doctor's appointment that day and my, my votes weren't counted. And so I wondered, can we move that when we have to vote on this many items, because I looked at each three times, uh, that we get more than three days. I would propose having a week to vote on stuff like that because I really would have liked my votes to have counted as well. Okay, well, um, how does everybody else feel about that? Diane, you were the one that prepared it. Did, did you feel that we, uh, we had enough time or I know, I know that the, there was a, um, a deadline imposed for the artists, which would, you know, influence when we got to, got to them. So there was quite um, a bit of work uh, to go through, you know, all of them and get them all uh, arranged. And I know Joan was, um, you know, integral in doing that too. Um, then the artists were very, um, persistent about wanting to know whether they had won or not. So we didn't want to keep them, you know, um, yeah, but, a week? Long, but um, we did review them during the, um, the meeting and everybody did agree to get them in on that day. So, I mean, by the, by what we had proposed, but I mean, moving forward, I'm not opposed to lengthening it out. Um, if the, that decision is up to you all. Okay. Yeah. The, you, thanks for reminding us, Diane. It, yeah, it was, there was a certain sense of urgency because we wanted, in this particular instance, we wanted to get them selected because, you know, we were on a time frame to get the, uh, you know, the selections done and the, you know, uh, printing process set up. And as I mentioned earlier, we we now have all of our ducks in a row and the boxes should be arriving within the next couple of days. So we're, we're really good to go. And, uh, uh, you know, maybe going, maybe in future, if we're not deadlined as much as we were on this project, we could think about, you know, uh, giving everybody a little more time to review, but um, um, everybody, you know, seemed to be okay with the time frame that, you know, we had. So um, anyway, I think the one thing that we do have to clarify about any future submissions is how many images an artist can submit. Absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought we were gonna do that and it just somehow slipped through the cracks, I think about the number they could submit. Right, and uh, can I hear any uh, other people's uh, feelings about that? Well, I, I mean, I, I don't have any problem with, with extending the voting time for us uh, uh, or, or leaving it as it is. I mean, I'm, I'm uh, fine with it anyway. Uh, mm -hmm. I do think uh, that we need to watch out about somebody really loading up the, the, uh, their entries. I mean, right. you can see that the number of people were doing that. Yes. I know there was one person that I think submitted 20 photographs. Yeah. <laughs> Thing like it. Well, I personally know um, two people that I know of that won two. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'm sure there were more than that, but those were two that I talked to. Yeah. Right. So I, I don't know whether this requires a motion, but I think going forward, we're going to restrict entries for any future consideration to one per artist. I thought we'd already done that because I'm. Yeah, we did, but I. Yeah, Trisha, I think you were right though. It kind of just kind of slipped through the cracks. Uh, so, uh, excuse me, gentlemen. Excuse yes. me. Dan has a, a comment. Um, I, I'm curious: Are the images that were selected available any place? I know we had a list of the artists' names, but are the images um, assembled together someplace? Uh, yes, I I assembled them. Um, the, the thing is that um, the, the final images had to be of very high quality. So they were huge files and I could probably try to process them in such a way that they could be knocked down so they could be shareable. Um, if you guys would like me to do that, I could try to get it into a, 
like a low memory or a low res PowerPoint and send it out. That'd Would that be great. okay, Lucienne? I, I'd like to see them. I know we'll get to see them in real life installed, but I think it'd be nice for future reference to know what um, filtered out. Right. I, I can honestly say, I think everybody made some great selections. And uh, Diane, would you say that there were some, you know, consistency in the choices going? It kind of surprised me since you all did a blind, um, you know, listing. There were quite a few that you all did select together, which was mm -hmm. kind of nice to see. Um, I'd say for probably um, about 60% were, you know, across the board. And then once we got down to that, it was like maybe two people mm -hmm. had decided that this was something they really liked. So we kind of went on from like three to, you know, three or four to about, you know, two at the end, but. Right. Yeah, it was, it was, I think you all chose some, you know, beautiful files. And what I have for the printer is on a thumb drive right now. And they're very, very large files. Right. Yeah. I walked them over to you on a thumb drive because I couldn't, that's the only way I could get them over to you to get to the printer. You know, they're huge. They're, I don't know how many gigabytes the files are, but the, it's, they're, they're really large. And I had to convert them all to PDF for the uh, for the printer, so it, I spent quite a quite a bit of time in good old Photoshop on them. The uh, printer is ready with the acrylic now, so we can get them over to him. Okay, yeah. And Jeff said that he would um, remail re re the uh, technical specs on the bleeds and mm -hmm. all that other interesting stuff. Um, the um, the second item under old business is the sandbag corral. I think we're gonna, if it's all right with everybody, I think I'd like to defer that to the next meeting. Okay. Does anybody have any strong feelings about the sandbag corral? Okay. Okay. Um, Joan? What are yes. You, what are I'm sorry, you? Lucy, I can't see you for some reason. So if you raise your hand, I-, I Oh, okay. Yeah, no. What are we deferring? I had some questions about it um, because right now it has a load of sand in it, <laughs> which I assume will stay there until hurricane season is over. Mm -hmm. But I, in reading the minutes from the last meeting, I was I didn't see that we had re really reached a resolution about whether how many artists we were going to use for it. Is that one, right. what you want to defer discussion of? Yeah, I, I just think we need to uh, give it a little more thought among our, you know, be, you know, ourselves and maybe, you know, explore technically and get a little more technical information before we proceed. And it's, you know, I think in the grand scheme of things, it's not a very high priority item. Does anybody have any comments or dis discussion points about that? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're all okay about deferring it? Yes. Okay. Yeah, the, the, uh, the sand issue, Lucianne, is a definite consideration. Okay, the, um, the Bahamian Sponger Project. Trish? Mm -hmm. Yes, um, I'm assuming that everybody got the um, the report that I sent and hopefully read it. Hmm? Well, I, I just wanted to make a comment that I think it's incumbent upon all of us to, you know, make sure we read and uh, understand the, you know, whatever attachments or files are sent to us before the meetings. So, you know, we can discuss it. Um, I was just I was just wondering, you know, the reason I asked that it was uh, to see, do I need to go through that or have you read it and understood it enough for me not to have to repeat what I wrote? Does anybody want any further discussion? Because I have a comment. Yeah, I have further discussion. I just wanted to know if... Um, well, the one the one thing I, I wanted to, to point out is that the... Uh, the purpose of the project and the statue was to highlight the history of the sponge industry, I which do. would include, you know, the Bahamian sponge people who use hooks. 
Okay. Well, <laughs> that word because it, people find it objectionable. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I think if it's the, um, I think if we wanted to expand into the, uh, into the community to do something, because you, you raised a lot of questions about, uh, you know, Reverend Smith and some other uh, people, um, that's something else we might want to pursue as a separate issue. But I think that the, um, I, I guess where I'm going with this is um, there's been a lot of discussion and research about the statue and the importance of the, um, you know, of this type of sponging in the community. And, you know, I, I just like to keep the focus on, uh, you know, who these individuals are. But I'd, I'd certainly love to entertain another project about, uh, you know, and that's, that will, you know, go to Lucianne in a minute about the opportunity zones. Okay. Trish? Okay, okay can I continue my report? Um, it sure. was my understanding, and maybe I misunderstood, but when we were discussing doing something in the African American community, that's when the Bohemian Project came up. That was what my memory was. And so that's why uh, I kind of explored, you know, talking to people in that community to see what they would like. So what you're saying is that we wanna do the Bahamian thing regardless of anything else. That's the focus, not the African-American community. Is, is that what right. you're it's saying? Like a, it's like a combination. Well, oh, Lucien, do you? Yeah, um, the way it's phrased in our master plan is, it, I think it, it's expressed as the PAC wanting to um, do a project that involved the African American community. So if that is in fact not the major focus, we need to change that statement because I'm my memory is is with Trish's. Right. Well, the thing is that it it would involve the uh, African American community, but with a focus on on the sponging industry. In other words, it's a sort of a double prong project. Well, that's not exactly the same thing because I'm not sure how it involved. I talked to David Archie and he didn't really seem to see a connection between the Bahamian spongers and, the, and their community. He really didn't seem to be interested in it. Um, but I kind of caught him by surprise, I think. So he hadn't had time to think about it. But uh, um, anyway, so I, th I think yeah, we need to determine, first of all, um, if they're the same thing or totally different, because then my focus has been wrong in what, I, uh, what I've done so far. Well, yeah, the discussion all along has been the, the Sponger statue, you know, and, uh, you know, and how the, you know, it's the contributions of the African-American community to that particular profession in that aspect of the sponge industry. Okay, if we want to, uh, if we're just concentrating on the, um, the spongers, then I had, I mean, the, uh, yeah, the Bahamian spongers, I had an idea for something that was in my report. So um, you may want to talk about that or not, but several people have liked that idea very much. Um, Chris, uh, Christopher Steele, had a couple of um, suggestions. One was, he said, um, he suggested perhaps reproducing a historic photograph, postcard or other approved artwork as a cost effective option. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, and then you could blow it up and do what we want to with it. Um, he thought a statue would be prohibitively expensive, which is what I think too. But he suggested if we wanted to go that route is to talk to Mitch Colby. Mm -hmm. who did the one at the church, at the Greek Orthodox Church. Right. So um, that was his suggestion. And um, that was also the suggestion of, Don, of John Terrapani. And, uh, you know, uh, I do have uh, Mitch Colby's contact information. So do I, I think. Um, um, yeah, my, my idea for the project, and several people have really liked it, because we have such very limited space on where to put artwork on the dock. Uh, we don't have any place for a mural. Um, I thought doing 
having someone do a nice painting um, and put it on one of the illuminated, well, my suggestion was the illuminated box that's next to the statue and put um, a history of the Bahamian spongers on there is, as a plaque and have it as a permanent, have it on both sides and have it as a permanent installation. So. How does everybody else feel about that? Michaela? Um, I actually really liked it when I read your report, Trish, about possibly doing some artwork with the Bahamian sponger in an illuminated art box. That's a more permanent feature uh, since we have extras. Um, it seems cost effective. It, it's a good way to put it near the sponge statue. And, uh, and that way we could do more of what Patricia um, thought about as far as maybe actually contacting members of the African-American community like you've been doing with Dr. Smith and so forth and seeing what did they want to be represented. So rather than spending hundreds of thousands of dollars or whatever on a big statue, uh, doing something like this. So we honor the Bahamian sponge industry. Um, and I loved your idea, but also checking with members like what you were doing on an informal basis and getting some feedback as to, look, you know, we're trying to honor you. Shouldn't we be asking you what you would like, you know, what is representative of you? Because while the Bahamian sponge part has the historical aspect, uh, it may not link very much to current uh, members of the African-American community. So asking them what they would like and then possibly using money we would have used for a sculpture to do some project, whatever they may come up with um, to honor them might be uh, more receptive in the community. But I loved your ideas. Thank you so much for contributing them, Trish. Okay, uh, Bill. Oh, Trish, I'm sorry. I'm not sure yet. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, I did talk to Dr. Smith. Uh, Reverend Smith, and he had a meeting last night, and he told me that he was going to, he liked my idea a lot, and he suggested, he said, well, would that be the only thing that you would do? He said, like, um, sort of suggesting maybe, perhaps if we did the painting and put it on the illuminated box, we could take that same painting and have it put somewhere in the, in their community, like the CAP Center or someplace like that, but um, would represent them. That was just an idea. He hasn't gotten back to me yet, so when he mm -hmm. does, I can send I can send Diane um, uh, sort of a report, and she can send it out to the pack. Okay. Anyone else? Bill. It just sounds sounds like we've done some meaningful research at this point, and it seems like there's more that's needed yet before we can figure out a path forward. It just mm -hmm. it. <clears throat> a lot of good research, Trish. Yeah, that's what I put. Where do we go from here? Determine uh, with input from them, from the African American community, what they would like to, what they would like as a way to represent them, and to decide if we want to do the Bahamian project. If the uh, community rejects that idea, which is, I mean, you've already answered that we want to do that project. Um, and then what form of art is uh, preferred? And then where does it fall in our master plan as far as um, you know, how soon we go with it? Right. Well, one of, one of the problems is that the, the statue has been proposed and approved by the Board of Commissioners at two separate meetings. So where do you think we should go with that? Um, doing a statue as... Mm -hmm. as project. Um, I've looked through the specs for doing a statue, for commissioning a statue, and <laughs> I think it would be very, very, very costly and time consuming. There's a lot of steps. It's kind of daunting, actually, when you look at all the things that you have to go through to commission a statue. Um, talking about a long period of time. Now, Mitch Colby may be able to come up with something, you know, quicker than putting out a call to artists. He might have some ideas about it. So, well, I think if something of this scope, where we're going to have to do a call to artist, that go that goes without saying. But certainly, he would be, you know, contacted. So, um, do, does the PAC feel that we should approach the Board of Commissioners to? do away with the whole statue concept? 
I didn't, I didn't uh, realize that they had uh, specified a statute. I, when was that done? I don't remember it being voted as a statute per se. Well, they, they voted the, they approved of the entire presentation, which included the statute. Lucianne, I saw your hand up. I, I don't think they took formal action on your presentation. I think, um, I, don't, I don't remember any formal board action. You presented your, your proposal. Um, there were some comments on it, but I don't think there was a formal vote. So I, I think everybody understood from what I remember that it was in process, it was being explored. I don't feel as though we're bound to it. Okay, uh, Robert, you had your hand up? Well, I, I just think that one, uh, it, it was a, a historical balance that, that that statue was proposed as to me. And uh, it has nothing to do, and, and this is, you know, with, with contemporary times, it's about the founding of, uh, of Tartan Springs, what Tartan Springs is. But if, if, if that's not um, really favorable uh, to, to PAC, to, to us, and, and maybe to the African American community, then this thing needs to be rethought. Uh, and, and there's been, I mean, Trish has had a lot of research into it and there's a lot yeah. of community involvement with it. The problem is, as you say, is, is where's it gonna go? How's it gonna go? Um, and how's it gonna balance off with uh, Tarpon Springs, uh, uh, you know, a Greek fishing community, a Greek sponging community with the fact that it was a railroad town, it was a spa town, it was, you know, it was those kind of things. So the history of Tarpon Springs can be told by by the uh, the public art it has. So if we're not going to use that, then how we how we in, incorporate both the historical aspect uh, of of why there's a, an African American community here and the the one that that originated it back in in the the, the 19th century or the early 20th century. So. Um, I, I think that, that we have to really rethink uh, how, how to balance it off. I think putting, putting uh, you know, information inside a lot, you know, light boxes, if it's a big enough light box, yes, I think. Uh, but if it's like the ones that we're putting up now, I don't think, I don't think that really uh, balances it out as, as much as it should be. But that, you know, so, so I think maybe we could reconsider and, and tell the uh, commissioners that were, after having involved the, the African-American community, this needs to be more worked out. Okay. Diane, uh, what is your feelings about uh, uh, whether, you know, whether the presentation was approved, whether that uh, is considered a consensus? by the board? I would have to explore that. I don't, um, I feel like that was the presentation of ideas mm -hmm. and they liked, you know, some of them, they, like I said, did give feedback and everything, but I don't think that you asked for actual, or, you know, the PAC asked for actual approval of every single, you know, item on there. I could be wrong, but that may be something that you want to do in the future moving forward. Just say, you know, once you decide on what you're going to do in that particular year, you know, as long as you all are in agreement on it, then, you know, say, we want these projects blessed because if you want to, if you want to talk about that, the sandbag, I mean, the, um, the garbage um, corrals were on it too, you know, mm -hmm. so. Yeah, so know. were the, uh, you know, what, you know, Bill's going to discuss the, uh, you know, the uh, recycling containers. So, I mean, I, I feel like maybe you need to, as a group, decide on, you know, the projects that are your priorities, you know, that you want to see completed. Maybe well, aren't they the ones completed. in the master plan? Yeah, they are in the master plan, but are they prioritized? That's my question. Okay, so... We're, we're basically going back to the drawing board here. Hmm. I don't think so. You have a lot of good projects. I mean, the illuminated art boxes are already almost, you know, done. And um, the 
um, story time will be installed at the cultural center shortly. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so there are things moving forward. It's just that a lot of these projects that you all have on, you know, in your plans, they, they take a lot of time to, you know, do the research and then, you know, find the artists and then, you know, all the qualifiers that go along with it, you know, it, they're, they're not very easy projects, like just saying, okay, we want to go ahead and hire Cecilia, Cecilia Luisa to do a sculpture for the kids splash park or, or, you know, one of the park, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's like, but then you have to put that call out, you know, to lots of different artists and see what you get. I mean, it's just such a process. So mm -hmm. I, I don't know whether a presentation at a board of commissioners meeting says that they adopted everything or not. I can ask, but that's- Right, because there was a presentation of a budget and, you know, right. itemized, you know, expenses for the projected budget. And I, I was I was under the impression that, you know, uh, unless there were objections to certain parts, it, it was kind of consensus. But that's something I think we have to confirm. Right. I'll, I'll ask. OK. Um, does anybody else have any comments about uh, Lucienne? Yeah, uh, just a general comment on process. I think every project we do, particularly if it is a major permanent installation, should survive a pretty rigorous process. Um, I think it needs to go through the research phase. It needs to go through a call for artist stage. And I don't think we should shy away from that process because what we're doing has a, a, a long life. And mm -hmm. um, I think we should embrace that rigor. Right, Diane. Uh, I I kind of agree because it's we're, they are major projects, but it's just you know unless you're working on it, like you know, Lucianne and I worked on the um, dumpster corrals together, and uh, you know, Joan and I worked on the illuminated art boxes. You know, if you're not working on a particular project, and then Trish was doing research, and you know, so everybody's doing different parts, but that everybody else that's not working on a project doesn't realize all the time that actually does go into mm -hmm. it you know so i would hate to see you know it's like all the work we did on the dumpster corrals to kind of do small beautiful beautification for artists that you know can't afford to do the um insurance i would hate for all that work to just be abandoned you know kind right. of thing. so you know, I think we need to consider that when you're talking about these projects and, you know, really kind of, you know, get together as far as the same page on what's a realistic timeline for these, you know, kind of thing. Right. Well, the other thing, too, is I wanted to remind you that uh, we did work on and codify a process. Would you, do you still have that in your files? The process, yes. Mm -hmm. Send it out. So Luciana, yeah, we did we did work on a on a on a on a process of how to undertake a major art project. And it would it would start with a proposal, then go to the board of commissioners for approval. And uh, you know, then you know, the call to artists, it was a you know, it was a step by step of how to do a project. So Diane, maybe you can email that out to everybody. Yeah, I always send it. It was from a couple of meetings ago. Yeah, it might even been a year ago. It was a while ago. Okay, I'll do that. Okay. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna kind of put the um, Sponger project on hold and find out some particulars about approvals and consideration. Is that? Is that okay with everybody or you just want to do away with it? How would we do away with it? All right, how does everybody else feel? Lucienne? I don't think it should be abandoned. I do think it needs some work. And 
really the point of my last comments was, I think we have to do a lot of background work for major projects. And if we come against, come up against a stumbling block, we ought to be able to say this won't work um, and be able mm -hmm. to walk away from it. Okay. Or else um, just get stuck, you know, with, with projects that are not feasible. Mm -hmm. But um, that's all I meant. I, I okay. think the process should be pretty um, disciplined. Right. Bill? Yeah, we should come up with a, an actual program, you know, how we're going to, how we're going to run it. It's like back to the, to the illuminated art boxes. I'm still not sure the locations are going to go into, where they're going to go, you know, and, and I think we need to really, especially with one like that, is, is have a whole series of, of, of steps that this is the way we're going to program this particular project mm -hmm. and it's ongoing and he, here's the way we're going to run it. Um, and I don't know that we get to that level um, before we kick it off. So right. sometimes I think we, we jump. But I like the Sponger project. Again, I was under the impression it was more historic that it was exactly. supposed to be put in context with the other, you know, uh, sponge diver that's down there with the statue and, and that it was kind of tell a story that, you know, it's, it's a little broader than what's being portrayed right now with, with who all was involved with uh, the history of sponging. So, you know. Yeah, so you, you're, you're see more in line with the way I was approaching it. That's, you know, I was looking at it as a, you know, a, a historic component of the sponging industry. Yes. So. Yeah, okay. I, I, I agree with that. And uh, um, it's sort of what I said earlier uh, is that I think it it uh, is it just balances some of the early history of Tarpon Springs, mm -hmm. and uh, but I also think that uh, maybe it needs to be clarified a little bit as to whether uh, the the commissioners uh, understand the the commitment to this and uh, okay. and and also where is it going to be? <laughs> I mean, it, you know, well, being it, a sponger, it was proposed for a location on the docks right there yeah and i i would think there's there's room there but then mm -hmm. then there was a sculpture that was refused for in front of the uh chamber of commerce building down on the docks wasn't it well yeah because the the donor wanted to surround it with a huge water feature in a plaza yeah, yeah. that basically uh -huh. blocked a uh an egress from the parking lot sure so yeah. it wasn't the sculpture that was the issue. It was the, it was the, the setting. All, all the stuff around it. Right. Yes. <laughs> the bathing pond, et cetera. Yeah. So. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. Who haven't I gotten here? Michaela? Um, if you guys want to go with a sculpture, I would be okay with it. Although, I, as I said, I, I love Trisha's idea of possibly doing something with the Bahamian spongers via a light box uh, nearby. So um, that would be more cost effective, I think. Mm -hmm. But um, but I, if the history aspect is the important aspect rather than uh, honoring people of color, then of course that puts a different twist on it. I wasn't there when you first brought up the Bahamian Sponger discussion. Mm -hmm. So I actually really wasn't privy to the thinking behind it. Um, so I will go with what you guys as a group think is best. Um, Okay, Robert. Yeah, I I just think what Trish is bringing up is is I think it is important to involve the uh, African American community, and that's another project perhaps. And right. uh, we we should take uh, what what Trish is suggesting and use that as a foundation for maybe what a project down the road would be that that mm -hmm. would uh, um, would would do that. I I think that would be really a good way to look at it. Okay, so I think what we need to do is to um, recodify the whole sponge sponger statue issue and take it back specifically to the Board of Commissioners and give them a formal presentation with just that project and see whether they, um, you know, approve or disapprove of it. Does that meet everybody's approval? Will we give them the option to say either you want a statue or whatever, or you want 
uh, something smaller like what Trish was suggesting. So when you're doing the presentation for the Board of Commissioners, they would have the option to say, okay, we wanna do something with Bahamian spongers, but we don't, we don't necessarily want to go with the full big full big ticket item. We want to go with a more medium sized item, uh, or are you only going to present uh, the statue idea? I, I think I think since it was the statue that was proposed, I think we're just going to go with this with the statue. And I'm sure we'll hear from the board of commissioners if they want to suggest anything else. But uh, I'm going back to Lucienne's comment, which I completely agree with, is that everything has to be, you know, codified and, you know, it has to be perfectly clear what, whether the approvals are there, the scope, et cetera, before we proceed. Is that, uh, is that whatever is kind of coincides with other people's thinking? Trish, is that your hand up? I'm yeah, it is. Um, one thing that um, Chris Steele brought out, let me find his, I think, well, I can just tell. Um, when, when we were discussing um, the Bahamian spongers, he said, actually, he's done a lot of research into this and he's been to the Bahamas and so forth, um, um, that they were not really that much a part of the dock. He said most of their work was done in Bailey's Bluff. Right. Okay. So, and it was only, let's see, in the late 1800s, very late 1800s, we're talking about maybe a 15, 20 year span until the Greeks came in with the diving helmets and kind of, you know, they took them out because they, they couldn't compete with, um, with the Greek divers with the, you know, with the equipment they didn't have. So they were gone. So it was actually a, a fairly small amount of time and they weren't really that much on the docks. You know, I guess they brought their sponges to the sponge exchange, mm -hmm. everybody else did. But uh, that's just something to keep in mind that they were not that big a part of the history I and mean, they weren't a huge part of the history of um, the sponge diving. Well, I might take issue with that one because I've also been doing an awful lot of research. And I'm, I'm quoting Chris Steele. Yeah, no, no, no. I, I see where he's coming from. And, um, you know, I've had extended talks with Dudley Sally, whose great grandmother was Mother Mears, you know, whose family's been a part of Tarpon Springs from the very beginning. And he reiterated basically what Chris said about, you know, the main concentration of those types of uh, spongers was up in Bailey's Bluff. But they did join with the with the Greek spongers because the original Greek spongers also used hooks. So it's there's a lot of overlap and it's it's a you know one of my favorite quotes is from H. L. Mencken, for every complex problem there's a simple solution. <laughs> and it's wrong. And yeah. that's kind of a, you know, I mean, you know, I've I've spoke to Annie Dabbs, I've spoke to David Archie, I've spoken to Dudley, I've spoken to an awful lot of people read a lot of books, done a lot of searching, and you're right, Chris is right, you know, but they they were still an in integral part of the, you know, the origin of the sponge industry in Tarpon Springs. Right, and I'm not saying they weren't, but you know what, it depends, it depends on whose account you're reading. There's so many people who've written accounts of that and histories, but it depends on who you're reading, what emphasis they put on, on uh, mm -hmm were and you know what they did so yeah. right the only thing I can compare it to is kind of the Dutch settlement of lower Manhattan you know they weren't there very long but they did make an impact and they did have an influence right. you know and then you know they basically were you know uh, supplanted by the you know the British but um, okay so this will just we'll have to get uh, some more research and some more um, uh, opinions about this. Okay. Um, all right. Now the, uh, the gateway sign survey. Um, oh dear. I'm having some trouble with my screen. I can just give you a quick update on that. Um, okay. The, um, Thanks, Diane. 
That was put out um, that Thursday of last week. It started and it's been on different, you know, platforms, social media, as well as Tarpon Arts and the public um, art section of our website, city's website. Um, and it is open until October 1st. So, so far there have been about 75 responses. Mm -hmm. um, and so um, once we get, you know, through the whole time frame and everything, we'll be able to compile everything and, um, you know, then give the PAC uh, members and, um, you know, Bob Robertson, who's working, you know, with the commissioners on, you know, that project, all that data, which I believe is really going to help them, you know, qualify a little bit because people are using the um, write-in section, you know, uh -huh. so that's, I think, powerful because you can, instead of just elements, you can also get a uh, feel for, you know, their, their ideas too. So right. I think well, I, I did want to emphasize that when this was originally proposed uh, at a board of commissioners meeting, and correct me if I'm wrong, I believe that the only involvement of the PAC was to prepare the questionnaire. Yes. Okay, so all the other tallying and the other work will be, all be done by the uh, by Bob Robertson. Yeah, and the, um, as a capital yes. project, the, the constant contact report compiles most everything, and then anything that they get verbally or by any other method, they'll just add it. You know, um, right? Done the report. Um, yeah. Do you know whether or not they're going to be making a you know a direct direct mail or a person person approach to you know they the are. people on the docks bob robertson is sending out um postcards and if they don't have access to the link he's got a phone number on there to call his assistant and um, she will take their responses verbally over the phone um also karen lemons is taking uh, printed copies to the business owners down on the sponge dock Great. I wasn't aware of that. That's wonderful. Okay. Because I know people very often, you know, don't follow up by phone or, you know, uh, over the internet. I think okay. it's going to be important too to get, you know, not only the um, business owners, but also the residents because that helps too, you know, to, to get the residents view as well as the business owners and the property owners. Right. Um, it was also brought to my attention by Tina Bukovalis who's a local historian, that that whole area is part of the, um, it's a national historic, I believe it's national. I know it's a Florida historic district. And I was wondering what impact that had on any of the signage. Because sometimes historic districts have restrictions on what can be put there. Well, so, I don't think, I don't think it's at that point right now. I mean, we're just gathering information. That's right. our only job. Right. And that's, our that's only job was to do right. <laughs> our only job was to do the survey. That's does anybody right. have right? Does yeah. anybody have any questions or comments about the survey or the gateway signage? Mm -hmm. yeah. Nobody? Okay. Um okay, Lucienne, the opportunity zone research. Luciana, are you there? I, I am now. Sorry. Okay. I can't right. find the mute button when I'm <laughs> cruising for it. Um, thank you, Diane, for sending this Opportunity Zone map. Um, I guess I, I really would like to bounce back to Bill and his recurring ideas and recurring theme of using um, various GIS layers to um, explore where we should be concentrating our efforts in areas of town that um, don't necessarily have public art in them. Um, the Opportunity Zone is huge. It essentially goes from Klosterman to Tarpon Avenue, and then all of the space um, between 19. US 19 and alternate 19. So that's a, that's a nice big area to work with from that standpoint. But um, Bill, would you talk about your ideas, particularly with the property value 
Well, well yeah, again, I was just trying to come up with some thoughts or some ideas on how we might delineate this a little bit further. Um, some of the things that we could look at were, you know, we have a downtown business district, then we have the sponge docks area, whether it's historic or, or what you might call it. Um, we also have the beaches, you know, and, and I don't know how we want those delineated, um, but if we take and, and, and make that huge plot that uh, Karen sent us, you know, a little bit smaller so that we can determine, you know, um, how do we want to look at this? What, what are the important factors to make sure that we're covering all the neighborhoods in Tarpon Springs? And, you know, whether it's the, the economic value, whether it's some of the corridors that we look at that we want to make sure that we're hitting them, you know, where's, what is important to really look at? And then one of the ways to track that is to figure out where have we spent our money? Where, where, where have we placed the public art? Where is it? And what's the value of it? So that we can kind of get an idea, you know, here's where we spread these dollars. And uh, this is what's not being served um, as, as well as it should be. So again, those were just my thoughts when I sent that note to uh, Diane to, to pass on to Joan and uh, uh, Lucy Ann. Okay, what, what type of projects would, would you envision in, the, in, this, in this, this zone? Because they're primarily residential, are they not? Are the, is, the, is the greatest bulk of the uh, properties residential? Um, it, it, it all depends how we're going to look at it. I mean, you, you know, you can take them and look at the corridors that, you know, mm -hmm. your Tarpon Avenue corridor, your, your you know, uh, Pinellas or Alt-19. Um, you know, obviously, I think the city's very interested in making sure that people coming through Tarpon Springs have this impression of, of you know, how this community is, mm -hmm. is you know, evolving and, and uh, coming to life with all kinds of art. And so I think that, you know, there, there's some value to that. So we, I think as a group, we have to figure out, you know, what's important and where we want to put it in conjunction to what, what the emphasis that the, the city is, is looking at, at doing as well mm -hmm. uh, and any kind of economic development. Um, you know, I think it's real easy to kind of put down, you know, where we put the statues, how much the statues cost, you know, it, so we can start getting an idea, um, you know, where we have our public art located. And then mm -hmm. again, uh, I just took a stab at some of the, you know, we've got the fruit bowl, which is a residential. We've got the beaches. We've got the, you know, the areas around the bayous. We've got the corridors. We've got the business district. Um, to take a look at some of those. And again, if you, if you delineate around what this downtown, how much have we put in public art downtown? Okay, mm -hmm. versus how much we put at the beaches, versus how much we put at the sponge docks, versus how much we put at some of these other places that we've decided that these are underserved and we've got to do more uh, to bring public art to those particular areas. Mm -hmm. it sounds It sounds like uh, this is probably uh, gonna morph into a workshop with perhaps Diane and Karen Lemons. Can I, I, I just wanted to mention, I can send, and I will send you all after this meeting, um, a list of the current public art and its locations right now. Keep mm -hmm. in mind, you know, we've got the naiads, we're gonna have story time, but it's predominantly bike racks, artistic bike racks. Right. Um, you know, we've got the Indianos mural that's at the cultural center. We've got an Indianos mural on you know one of the places here in um, the Heritage Museum, but right. there's not a huge amount of public art that's out there. Right, and the mermaid, yeah. So basically, you're pioneers. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so that's why if you take that corridor and whatever you put there, you know, I guess it has to be driven and maybe taken some pictures and things like that, or maybe even some a local real estate agent can give you some good demographics on the neighborhoods. They're usually the ones that know, you mm -hmm. know the most about areas. I mean, that's kind of like another kind of research kind of project that you can do to kind of say, hey, this, you know, we've identified that these are the places that would probably benefit the most, you know, people mm -hmm. 
and um, just kind of plot it. And then we can create, you know, a map for you on where you would like to, you know, start placing these and then prioritize. And then what is it going to be? Mm-hmm. You know, is it going to be, you know, what it, what is it? You know, what element are you going to put there kind of thing? So right. I think that's a project in and of itself. You know? Right. Right. But as we begin to look at the, the location of the illuminated art boxes, as we begin to look at the corrals that were, were, were you know, the, the dumpster corrals that we're looking to put, and as we, you know, look at the, the, what Commissioner Carr is looking for, I mean, all these things are starting to swell up, and, mm-hmm. you know, I, I think it's important that we have a good feeling and, and understand and, and a priority with where we want to see this public art distributed and how we want to see it distributed because it's not an endless fund of dollars that can go into it so right. where, where can we get the best you know return on that right yeah you want you want to you want to create something that's that has an impact also you know it's um you know something that's meaningful robert well i just you know just thinking about the spread out uh areas and uh, the fact that a lot of them are residential is that there, there are designated uh, major corridors going into those residential areas and that the residential areas uh, have an identity, I suppose. I'm not, you know, I'm new to Tarpon Springs, so I'm not familiar with everything, but uh, there are certain areas that have a designation or could have a designation where you get a sense of community pride for that particular area. So mm-hmm. there could be markers like like a mile marker or something like that that that's placed as you are now entering. I know you know you can do that like you know in in St. Petersburg historic Kenwood. I mean you mm-hmm. you can't go into historic Kenwood without knowing you're in historic Kenwood. Mm-hmm. You know? And and right. the same thing with with certain areas here in Tarpon Springs, uh, you know uh, that that are not as distinct as as say the docks or or the major downtown area but i mean that is an opportunity for some some uh, kind of placement of public art that that wouldn't be super expensive mm-hmm. and and it, it could be it could be hooked up with the city and you know, i'm getting ahead of myself instead of buying a bunch of sculptures from a catalog and placing them along the bike trail. Mm-hmm. I, I'm I'm giving away my some of my thoughts. So. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're we're getting there. We're getting there. <laughs> okay, uh, Michaela. Yes, um, Bill. I think your idea of putting uh, a map which says what we've got where and how much has been spent in that area is fantastic, and I'm glad that Diane has so much of that already squared away. So I think we just need to add the dollar amounts to the kind of materials you have. Um, but one thing that I wondered, and, and I don't know if this is the right section, but since you were talking about potential underserved areas, we have talked in a previous meeting about saying that there might be certain walls on buildings that the city owns that might be worth worthwhile for potential future mural projects. Can we get a list of those walls? Can we put them on that map so we can see okay, here are the underserved areas. Here are potential places that we already have where we might be able to put something so that they kind of overlap, if you will. This is what we've got. This is walls we have that we might be able to do something with. Um, And then add on to what Robert was saying about, you know, um, maybe we want signage or whatever for certain gateways through neighborhoods or to you know, Pat, I, I live off of Klosterman, for instance. I don't think other than locals, a lot of people know that that's one of the best ways to go toward Howard Park if you're coming from South County. And uh, so, you know, there, there's something along those, there are lots of opportunities. And I'm just wondering, can we add the walls we already own for the city that might work for potential projects, just so we have that all in the mix and we know, okay, here's a possibility if we're looking for something. What do you well, guys think? I, I believe Paramitra already sent out the GIS maps that have all of those uh, specifications. Is that correct, Diane? She did send a map that has, you know, city owned properties. Right. But I'm not sure it has all the addresses on it. So. Okay. 
And, and does anybody have a picture of what the walls are that might be potential? Because there might be an address that's a city owned address, but might not have a wall that would be work for a potential mural or, or art project. What do you guys think? Patricia. Uh, yeah, uh, Michaela, I have looked online for public buildings to put murals and so forth. And um, I, say, I think I just Googled um, uh, public buildings in Tarpon Springs, if I'm not, you know, I think. Mm -hmm. And there was a, you know, there was a list of the public buildings. And I have to say there is nothing, nothing that lends itself to um, murals. Okay. Yeah. All right. But, I mean, well, can, we've, we've got a we've got a we've got a really biggie to discuss, but that's further down the agenda. I don't know if you want to segue to it or not right now, since we're kind of talking about this. What is that, Jen? The water tank. Oh, the water tank. Oh, where is the water tank that you're talking about? On the golf course. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Is everybody okay with uh, jumping up in the uh, agenda? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to the water tank. Okay, um, it's on the grounds of Tarpon Springs Golf Course. Um, it's visible from Sisler Field, and that's something else we should probably talk about. And um, at the Board of Commissioners meeting, they discuss um, paintings with, um, you know, both golfers and ball players because obviously it's on the golf course and it is visible from um, the baseball field. Uh, and because of the size and scope of the water tank, they suggested using the same applique method that Chris still used on the Macris building to adhere to the water tank. And this would allow artists to create work in their studios, which can then be photographed enlarged using the applique process and which can be installed by licensed and insured contractors, namely uh, Speedpro, who did the work with uh, Chris Still. And um, I had a discussion earlier with Diane, and I'd like to get everybody's feedback on this one. Um, this is a huge structure. And um, do you guys feel it would be appropriate to do a series of panels or to just, use one artist to create, uh, you know, uh, some kind of illustration or painting that would go around the entire tank. I, Trish? Yeah, I personally think that one artist would be, to me, better because you'd have continuity in the type of art all around uh, the whole thing. That's just my opinion. Okay. Um, Michaela? Um, I agree with Trish that I think one artist's vision going around rather than a, a series of different artists work on the water tower would look better. Um, but I just wanted to clarify, I, I like the speed pro, pro process and everything, uh, but did we clear it out that if the artist is using that and the speed row people are doing the actual installation, does the artist still have to get individual liability insurance even though he or she is not actually doing the installation? Well, um, I would assume that if some, if you, if we're going to be using one artist for the entire water tank, uh, mm -hmm. that artist is not going to agree to a thousand dollars. No, Robert, would you? No, <laughs> no. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> absolutely not. All right, so that that's... there's there's one going on in Dunedin right now, you know. Right. So. Okay, but. You know, the thing is, if we if we do use one artist, now we're talking about a much more expensive process. And that being said, it takes it out of the realm of the minor subcontractor. And that individual would obviously have to get the liability insurance that was uh, specified by the city attorney. Okay, even though they're not actually doing the installation because Speedbro would be up there on the ladders putting that thing on the on the water. Right. right. This is why the uh, artist alley got deep sixed. Right. You recall. Okay, I just wanted to clarify if they right. have to because maybe they can get maybe they can get it for just two days when they're installing, you know, as opposed to getting insurance for months or something on end. Um, and that could make it more reasonable. Is that a possibility? No, uh, I, I again, you know, it's uh, that's a question for our city attorney, Trish. Is it okay, I'm totally confused with this. Okay, you have 
an artist who's creating a picture, okay, which will go around around the, the structure, correct? Right. Okay, so they're going to be completing that in their home, in their own space. So mm -hmm. what happens, my understanding is that Speed Pro takes that um, and they do a picture of it and then, or somebody does a picture of it and install. So there's no artist that's up there working. So I don't Trish, know. We went, we hashed, I'm sorry to interrupt, but we hashed all of this out before. This is what killed the Artist Alley project. I know that, but that's a different thing. Not really. It is because they would be actually up working on on the walls. Where no, the, the the whole the whole the artist alley was. I attempted to to find a workaround for this artist liability issue by using Speed Pro and have the artist paint the images in their homes, and I was still told by the town attorney that the artist still needs all of the liability insurance, even though they weren't on site. So that would apply to the water tank as well. Uh, wouldn't I, that have to do with the way the contract is written? Um, that the, um, uh, you know, there are contractors and subcontractors and subcontractors and uh, so, um, it, it seems to me that, that, you know, like there's a lot of places where an artist doesn't have to get uh, workers compensation because the company they're working with, they have, will carry that workers compensation. I mean, that's happened to us in the past. And uh, uh, we're not, we don't have to carry it because we're not doing the, the, the physical work up on the scaffoldings maybe. So, uh, um, you know, I, I think there, there's, you know, the, the way a contract can be written could, could Sort of get around it, but I mean, you say you you've gone through this with the city, and uh, I, I I know from dealing with cities that they have their own boilerplates for how they they write their 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 uh, contracts. But Diane, sounds... I, I, did I see your hand up? Yeah, did you see my email before we came on, Joan? Because uh, I was able to talk to Tom Trask about this scenario, so I said to him, I said, okay, let's just say we have an artist that we want to do the water tank. You want to do a beautiful picture of nature and you want some ball players in it and you want some golfers in it. Okay. And so let's just say hypothetically that we say, we're going to pay you $5,000 to paint this picture. Okay. So there's one contract with the artist. If the artist paints that painting in their house, in their studio, they don't have to have, insurance but then there's a second contract their second contract is with the guy who makes the photo of the um the painting mm -hmm. okay and then if he does that in his studio then he doesn't need insurance the third contract is with speed pro they have to have insurance because they would be installing it on city property. So that would be three contracts with three different people. And the only person that would need the insurance would be the um, guy who put it onto the, um, you know, the water tower. Yeah, and, but however, there's a caveat there. I have to check with um, our finance and our procurement people because depending, it, we may need three different bids on the photographer and the guy who does, who adheres it onto the water tower. I don't know. It was too close to the meeting to get that information. So, but that's what I found out today. All right. Um, yeah, and I think the other thing, uh, this is exactly the opposite of what I was led to believe about the artist alley artists. I was told that they still needed the insurance. Right. So because, I just found the email. Because they were in because they were installing it on a building. No, they weren't. They were okay. No, the, the, the whole idea was to that they would paint it in their studios and use the applique process. But at that time. 
the contract was only with the artist. We would have to do multiple contracts with the people who, so Speed Pro would have their own separate contract. Right, that was. Okay, well then that right. would work. Right, I, I think, I think maybe one of the problems with the artist alley was that it was on private property. Could be, yeah. That would be another yeah. contract. <laughs> right, so. Um, hmm. Oh, okay. I'm getting all kinds of diverging well, information. You know, a, a, a solution to it would be for the artist to sell the painting to the city and the city put it up on the water tower. Right. I mean, that's, that's the simple way. But then again, I've dealt with cities where they go, I don't know if we can do that. <laughs> right. Well, the, Michaela? Uh, I was just thinking when Diane was talking about how you can do three contracts, you could possibly do narrow it down to two, have one with the artist, you produce the artwork and produce a photo. Whether you subcontract that out is up to you as an, you know, some artists are good photographers and some aren't. And so that would be only one contract and then the speed pro would be the second one. Making it a little bit more streamlined, does that, does that potentially work? So uh, not really because the, um, the uh, photograph that Speed Pro needs is a highly technical layered image, right. which I don't think most photographers are capable of, of doing. I mean, I, if somebody else is capable of doing it, then I'm sure it could go out for bids. But again, it's a very you know specialized process. It right, go but out for provide one that, that meets the specifications. When I looked into it before, um, I found, I used the photographer um, that Chris still used for his piece and, uh, and he was perfectly willing to, to do a high quality piece that Speed Pro could work with. Right. Uh, so I'm just saying, uh, it would just, I just thought it would be easier to just do two contracts rather than three. If the artist can find one that actually, they obviously have to meet the, you know, qualifications that Speed Pro needs. If you, you know, you can't provide that, then you can't fulfill your contract. I was just well, the thing is, the, the thing is, you know, in, in my recollection, the when I spoke to the photographer, he said that he he charged one hundred and fifty dollars, and he works at Speed Pro. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not going to quibble about one hundred and fifty dollars. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you know, on a project of this size, I don't know how anybody else feels. You know, when we're talking about a, a huge project, and uh, you I know, that's a good uh, price. <laughs> Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's a good point. And, and it's somebody, right? It's somebody that's used to Speed Pro and using, you know, and doing mm -hmm. things up to their specs. Trish, um, I was wondering about if we had three contracts and dealing with three different people, uh, we have the thousand dollar limit. Is that going to cover? Is that per contract or just for the artist? Or I mean, Speed Pro probably is going to charge more than that to install. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you know, so I'm just wondering about how how the cost and, and uh, uh, for the public art can get. Um, well, can again, this situation. Right, so I'm sorry, I thought you were finished. Um, again, this goes back to whether we want to hire one artist, uh, you know, and I'm sure that would be a very healthy fee, even no matter how, you know, whether we commission them or whether we purchase the painting, we're not going to get anything like that for $1,000 that I'm aware of. The other alternative would be to use the panels going back to, you know, a thousand dollar per artist. Mm -hmm. That's why I wanted everybody's opinion of how they felt that, you know, this should go. But it seems like the, the majority, well, most of the people, well, two people said that they want wanted uh, one artist. Robert, how do you feel about? Uh, you're going to get a much better product if you have one artist dealing with that. I mean, if if there's okay. uh, the complication of getting baseball players and golfers and things like that in it, I don't I don't know what the restrictions will be. I think mm -hmm. you should really open it up to what the artist's interpretation of how to deal with this thing is. You'll get a you'll get a better readable and a better quality thing that way. All right, Bill. Yeah, I, I, I defer to you artists, you know, uh, to, to come up with the best solution there. That sounds like it makes sense to me. Okay, but you would be in favor of one artist versus a series of panels? I, I believe that that would have, keep it more consistent. 
Okay, Lucianne? I totally agree, one artist. Okay. okay. So, um, what about right. price? Well, the, now if we're, if we're talking one artist, we have to do a call to artists and, you know, uh, get, get proposals and quotes. But you and, still need to set a limit. Right. How would, may I ask a question? Trish, sure. Yeah. How, how large a painting are we talking about? Um, they would have to blow it up quite a bit, but as far as the artists producing this, what size would they have to paint? What size panel would they have to paint on? Uh, or, the, or they might have to do a series of paintings to go around that whole structure. Right. Okay. Um, so I'm just wondering what size we're talking about because they can, you know, uh, when they take a picture of it, they can blow it up quite a bit if it's right, a really right. quality thing. So has that been explored about, I mean, we're talking about cost, how much it would cost, but if they're not gonna be doing a huge, huge panel, if they could do smaller works, maybe they would do it for a thousand dollars. Okay, Robert. Well, we, we completed, Carol and I completed a, a 15 foot by 70 foot mosaic in Germany. And we submitted a uh, 72 inch uh, painting of that particular panel. So it was, it was scale oriented. It was on five different walls, making up one painting, mm -hmm. but our requirement was to do a scale of one inch equals one foot or something somewhat like that. Now the, the company like VPro had probably had speed pro had probably has a way of taking that and doing their, their, uh, copies of it up to certain points. So that's how they did Christopher Stills, I think. And the, so, so I think uh, that doesn't really answer your, your question because uh, if you're designing a, a painting that's, let's say what, I don't know how big the tower is. Let's say it's uh, 15 feet by 60 feet. I mean, that's a, that, you know, you're, you're trying to create a, an image that's going to be readable and that kind of thing. Uh, so it's going to be worth way more than a thousand dollars, you know, even though you're doing a one inch equals one foot painting, which is, is something that most people can do. I mean, uh, actually, I have to admit, we had a 28,000 square foot studio in St. Pete, but we did that painting on our dining room table. Mm. So, <laughs> okay. so Lucianne, yeah. did you, did you have a comment? I, I, I do. I, to me, all of these sort of technical things would fall under Speed Pro's um, specifications right. both mm -hmm. for the photography and what kind of image they had to work with. But um, we've just spent a little bit of time talking about underserved areas and doing some mapping and modeling of various parts of town. And we jumped into a very specific, expensive project. Um, and I just feel like we're we're flailing around with individual projects when we still don't have a global vision of where we want to see major art installations in town. Well, the, the, the thing about the water tank is uh, at the behest of the Board of Commissioners, and that's why it's gotten thrown into the mix. But that's why it's so critical to have a, a, a set of priorities because we can look at them and say, here's what we see you know, we're not saying no to that. We're just saying this is what we're looking at and why. Um, right. Having been on that golf course many a times, I, I do question the amount of dollars going into that with the number of people that are going to actually enjoy it and 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 be able to, to look at it. So it is a question. And, and I think it's one of those things that you, you evaluate. Right. But we don't have the criteria with which to evaluate it. Yet. Right. Yeah, and you know, like we we don't even have the dimensions, or as Robert pointed out, the proportionality of the tank. And uh, and you know, Bill's right. I mean, it's it's going to be a limited or you know audience because it's set way back from Alt 19. It's really not visible from Alt 19. So the only place it would be visible from is the you know the backyard of Green Dolphin and the baseball field. But, you know, again, 
this was, you know, we've, we've gotten requests from the Board of Commissioners, so we have to go back and perhaps ask them, is, is this, you know, this was the, you know, the discussion at the PAC and whether they really want to continue to consider this. Lucianne? I'd like to propose that we proceed with the modeling of the town and identifying areas where we have art, where we don't, and then go back to the commission and say, we've done this background work. Paramita has all these beautiful layers of, of GIS and Falderall. Um, this is where we've spent your dollars, our dollars. Um, this is where we think we need to go. I, I can't think that we wouldn't get a very warm reception to that kind of planning and thinking. And then we could start to plug some of these um, specific suggestions into that framework. I, I think the commission would appreciate that. Okay. Uh, Robert, you had your hand up? Well, just, just I, I agree with Lucianne on that in a way and agree, agree with, uh, with what William said uh, is that um, maybe, maybe uh, not having this, this really kind of detailed plan, this detailed goal, this global kind of goal with, with this thing is we're leaving openings for the city co uh, commissioners to propose art. That's our job. And uh, that's not their job. Their job is to put in sidewalks and things like that. Where job is to to put public art in in in, in Tarpon. So there, those of us are are engaged in that and involved with that. And uh, and um, you know I was railing about a, a a project that the commissioners want to put in on on the bike path and say that's that we'll, that we'll is, get to that. <laughs> yeah, that that is breathing our oxygen. You know, it's it's somebody that that's sort of imposing things and they they come out of a different budget they come out of you know they have their own money and stuff like that mm -hmm. but it's the spirit of the thing of the, the the city commissioners thinking that they can request us to verify their artistic decisions and you know i i find uh, you know I, I i i don't agree with that well i agree with all of you ten thousand mm percent -hmm. But I can also tell you in no uncertain terms that I have been told on several occasions that we work at the behest of the Board of Commissioners. So um, I think that this is a point that needs clarification because I, I think, Robert, you expressed it beautifully. I think you're exactly right. We're on the, we're on the public art committee because uh, we have certain qualifications, certain interests. Um, I think we've been doing a good job. I think we're, you know, a responsible committee. And, uh, you know, uh, it's, you know, it's like, you know, we're not to be asked to do sidewalks. We're asked to do art. And I think that it should be, you know, our scope and our responsibility to do art. And with that, shall we segue to the um, sculpture locations across the bike trail, which is, um, <laughs> go ahead, Robert, you're, you're primed and ready. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're asking us to rubber stamp their decisions on this. And, and um, you know, again, I've said everything I have to say. That, that's my opinion. We're rubber stamping that. In this instance, yes. Lucianne. Um, I'm confused. When we really seriously considered, and I was very committed to it, to proposing some real art on the, on the um, Safford Trail, we were told, hands off, that's county property. We can't put art there. But now art is being, well, statues are being proposed. So I'm a little confused about that. I absolutely agree with Robert's um, perception that we're being asked to affirm this. And I, I don't think we really need to act on it. Well, um, again, again, I agree. I think the reason it ended up with us is because um, the, our role would be to uh, kind of 
determine if there were any sites that would interfere with any of our projects. And, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm just speechless by this whole thing. I, I, I think it's a, I agree with you. I think it's a bad idea. I think it's, you know, the equivalent of uh, garden gnomes. Um, I, I think it's- I'd like them more. <laughs> Anyway, Bill, do you want to chime in on this? Uh... <laughs> I, I totally agree. I, it, 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 it's not what I think of when I think of what our mission is. That's, it, it doesn't seem to fall into it. Right, uh, Trish? Well, um, when I saw this, I was wondering what, um, what they wanted us to do as far, because uh, the statues are already, they've already decided on those. And actually, I have to kind of be the odd guy out here because I kind of like the idea. Okay. The, statues, the statues are very nice. They're very, uh, they're very well done. You can look at them and tell that. Um, uh, they're not just something, you know, out of a garden shop or something. They're, they're really nice statues. And I, I've seen this in other cities. And and they're pretty cool, you know. Think of having some a uh, couple of kids at the uh, splash park or ball player at the ballpark. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay. I think it would be cool. I like it. All right. Did I miss anybody? I'm having some trouble with my screen. Michaela, uh, I, I agree with Robert 100%. Um, I I think that if they I don't know the board of commissioners people, so I can't say, you know, what their personalities are like or so, but, but if they want a public art committee to help determine that we're bringing real art to the area, then having um, these particular statues, I don't think is necessarily the way to go. And the fact that they're overlapping, um, is something that I would think is, is kind of concerning because if they want to do our job, then they should just do it. <laughs> and, um, mm -hmm. um, but on the other hand, again, I don't know the people at all. So I have no idea if they would feel very stepped upon if we said, hey, look, you know, this isn't your purview, this, this is our purview. And maybe as a group, we, we might not find that having, um, not particularly unique statues um, spread throughout the community willy nilly is is all that great for us. Um, you know, we would much rather have like one good project or so. But again, mm -hmm. I, I don't know the personalities. I don't know the politics behind it. So I defer to those of you who've been involved in this process much more. Um, but I, I, I stand with Robert as far as I, I think they're kind of overstepping their bound. Robert? Well, I think uh, what, what Lucy Ann's been bringing up throughout this meeting is this overall plan for the city. And because of that, I would say that they ask, they're, they're kind of asking us to help them place this so it wouldn't impose on where we're going to put art. Uh, but it does impose on where we're going to put art because we are, are going to be looking at and, and this year and next year and, and at places to put art. So when they use up a space, for these, where it hasn't gone through the art committee for, for uh, suggestions of what it is, it uses that space. In other words, uh, if there was some kind of an agreement with Pinellas County that we could use the, the bike path as, uh, for some kind of a project down the road, it's already for, foregone conclusion that, well, we got a pelican and we got a kid on a bicycle and we got this and that. So it's already imposed on our uh, placement. So, um, what I would say is that that it 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 it's uh, it's taking away possibilities of where we can put art. Right. And Lucienne, I had the same question you did about using the bike path after we were told that it was county property and we couldn't put our our projects there. So I'm I'm kind of uh, quizzical about this. I can't, I can't imagine that there isn't a way to communicate with the county um, to present a really 
quality project. I just, I can't imagine that there isn't uh, room for that conversation. Yeah, I agree, but I think we have to have come up with uh, an appropriate project to do it. You know, um, the, I, I guess my, my issue with putting the art boxes there was that um, I don't know how much of an impact it would have, you know, unless we put it in, you know, a very defined geographic space. Um, it was more, it was more a, a visual and artistic concern than whether it was a, you know, we could get permission to do it. But um, again, you know, I think, I think we should uh, perhaps reach out to uh, the county and see what could be, you know, considered for, uh, you know, art along the bike trail. Okay, Bill. Uh, is that, oh, Robert, do you have any other comments? I, I just, just, just a question, because uh, what I'm thinking to Lucianne's question about uh, this is, this is Pine, you know, the bike trail is Pinellas County. Uh, is Stafford on either side of the bike trail, Pinellas County, or is that city? I believe so. Diane, do you know? I, I know, I'm pretty sure the roadway is county, but I think the sidewalks are tarpon. Well, that might be their thought process. Right. Okay. Um, just about, looking. Yeah, what about the green space? And we have the sidewalk and then the green space is where anything artwork would go. So is that city? Is that part of the sidewalk? Is that city? Owned? I, I, I thought it was. I thought that was county, but I can check. Diane, do you know off the top of your head whether that's county or city? No, I don't either. I was just told that the, the bike path and that, you know, you know, and the green space on either side of the, the path itself was county because it was part of the old railway uh, roadbed. The whole thing probably would be county then, that whole, whole expanse. Right, right. Uh, Bill, uh, the Pelican, Pelican Brief and the... Pelican. <laughs> The last time we left it, uh, you and Kyle were to, to put your heads together. So I have not spoken with Kyle or communicated with him. But if that hasn't happened, then I guess I need to reach out to him again. I sent him a couple of texts to which he has not responded. That's kind of the same issue that I, I've experienced. Right. OK. So I will reach out again and uh, try to push. Okay. I was hoping uh, the two of you had gotten together and. Yeah, I was, I was hoping, you know, cause I know that uh, in the past he always responded to texts because if he was working, he wouldn't pick up the phone. And I sent him a couple, I actually, you know, copied the same text about just, you know, getting a hold of me at such pace and uh, nothing. Okay. Um, does anybody else have any, I think we hit everything on the agenda. Joan, excuse me. Oh, sure. Do you, um, do you all need to vote on whether you want to participate in, in um, Vice Mayor Carr's uh, or do you wanna just say no that the, the Public Art Committee doesn't want to participate? Um, so I don't know if you needed to make a decision as a as a well, group. Um, we could, um, I don't even know what the motion would be. Um, I think it was to assist on the placement. To assist okay. The placement. okay. I think uh, Robert had mentioned, can, is it possible that we, we say, you know, we're, we're working on a, a larger scale global plan and we will take that into consideration as, as we kind of pull all these layers together and all this information together. Because that's okay. the only way we're going to be able to really help him. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Uh, can we catch that in terms of a, mem uh, a motion? And if, if we can, uh, can I get a second on it? So in other words, just defer discussion on this while we, we get a, a more global idea of what we're going to be doing. Yeah, we're trying to get a handle on what we currently have in inventory and where it's located and what priorities we're setting going forward. Right. 
Okay. Uh, so that you would you would so so move on that. You would make a motion to that would, effect. Yes. Okay. Can I get a I'll second? A second. I'll second it. Okay, Robert. Now uh, that I can vote. <laughs> right. All in favor? I. Anybody opposed? Okay, it's unanimous. Okay, uh, Diane, city announcements. Just that, oh, uh, if you've passed by the um, cultural center, uh, you'll see that um, it's been graded. A lot of landscaping has been taken out in preparation for new landscaping there, and they will be um, probably um, pouring the concrete slab. Um, it's going to be kind of a um, an oval shape um, to enhance the story time sculpture that should be put in probably sometime they said by the end of the next week. Right. Exciting. And then they're going to be putting um, the, the lights, the lighting on it, and um, they've got a beautiful landscaping plan for that whole area. So Great. it's going to be really sharp. Okay. Uh, was there a decision made about the plaque or are they waiting for the installation? I thought you said you wanted to wait until it was installed before. Right, that's did it. right. I just wanted to confirm that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, our next regular meeting is going to be Tuesday, October 13th, 2020 at 2 p.m. again via Zoom. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? I make a motion to be adjourned. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. I don't think I have to ask who's all in favor. So. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, very good meeting, folks. I think we got a lot accomplished. So I um, hope to see you all soon. Okay, bye. Bye.